Okay, so it's 12.30, all right? This should be principles of marketing. They're supposed to have sound in here so that I can use the microphone so that you people in the back can hear me. I'm pretty good about projecting, but we also record this class, so I, a lot of times we use the mic so that it'll pick up a little bit better on the sound system on the camcorder. Um, this is Principles of Marketing. I'm Brandon Gary. Welcome back to the fall semester. I hope everybody's ready for the fall to start. I'm really not. Uh, my brother's kids don't start until after Labor Day, and I think that's a far more civilized time to start school, but nonetheless, this is where I'm at, so we'll have to, to go with it. This class is a little different than any other class that you've taken on a college campus in that you are already experts in marketing. From the moment you were born until the moment you die, people will market to you. So you already know a lot about marketing. So rather than just being a boring lecture class, we're actually going to engage in the discipline of marketing in here and actually practice marketing. So what we're going to do to start out with today is we're going to start out with a critical thinking challenge for you. And I have these sheets that you will fill out. What you're going to do is I want you to think about your strengths. Perhaps the most important word in marketing today is differentiation. Because we have a voluminous number of companies out there competing for your dollar. And so how do they differentiate themselves from their competitor? What makes Coke different than Pepsi, for example? Why is it that Coke is more popular than Pepsi worldwide? It's different than Pepsi. It's not as sweet as Pepsi. And so it's that differentiation. They have something called a trade secret, which they don't let anybody know what's actually in the recipe. And so they have this different product from all the other soft drinks that are out there on the market. And they've been enormously successful. So we have a lot of times talk about strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats in marketing. This is called SWOT analysis. And what I want you to do is I want you to think about three of your biggest strengths that are going to differentiate yourself from other people in the market. And then I want you to write them down in a complete sentence on this form. After you finish with that, we'll do part two of the group, uh, or the critical thinking challenge, which is you're going to get in groups of about six people. I want to have about 10 groups in this class. So you're going to get groups of about six people. You're going to share your strengths with everybody else. You're going to come up with a team leader. And based on your collective strengths, I want you to come up with a team name. This will serve as your brand identity for the semester. Now, don't freak out. You can change teams if you want. And then after you come up with your team name, we're going to play Marketing Survivor in here. You're going to have one person elected as your pitch person, and they're going to get up along with the team, introduce the team members, and they're going to tell us why we should keep your team on the island, at least until Thursday. So we'll all vote. We'll play Marketing Survivor, and we'll see which team wins. Seven teams enter, one team leaves now. But we'll let you all stay for the first day. But we're going to do that as part of your thing. So uh, start thinking about this. I'm going to give these to you as I hand these out. And then I will give you one sheet for the entire group uh, to come up with your team name, to list your team name. Now, again, you can change groups throughout the semester. You can vote yourself off of your team's island and go over to another island and choose them. Or you can vote people off of your island as we go along. Uh, that's, that's OK, too. But we're going to start with this group project for today. So think about your three strengths that are going to differentiate you from everyone else. Then fill out these forms, and then we'll play team, or we'll play marketing survivor, and then we'll talk about the syllabus. So I'm going to turn off the camera. By the way, you will be recorded in this class. You will have to present in this class. So if you're in the witness protection program, you need to leave now, because these videos will be uploaded to YouTube. They have this thing on YouTube called facial recognition software. And if you're hiding out from the mob, they'll be able to locate you here in beautiful Edmond, Oklahoma. However, if they find you in Edmond, Oklahoma, because it's such a not nice place to live, they might let you live anyway. They figure that's a punishment enough. But if you're in the witness protection program, you don't want to be on YouTube, you don't want to be a star, um, now's the time to let us find you another class. So 
So I'm going to turn this off, I'll hand this out, and then uh, do that for about five minutes, come up, complete sentences, and then get into groups, and I'll pass out the second part. So let me stop this. By the way, I'm not playing with my phone. I'm yeah. All right, so welcome back again. If you decide at some point in time you don't like your group, you're welcome to change groups. This is not permanent, but it gets you started because we will work in groups a lot in this class. So there should be about, I hope, seven groups, right? Is that what I figured? It's seven to ten groups based on how many people. So every group has a pitch person, right? Every group has done that. Okay, so if I can have the pitch people stand up. <laughs> all right, so the pitch people are all standing up. So to avoid mass pandemonium of everybody rushing, because I know each of you is eager to stand up here and be on YouTube and get your face out there and be a YouTube star. So to avoid the mass rush of people up here, like I said, we're going to let you choose which order you go in. I'm going to give you a number, so you have to remember your number. Should I start at the front or the back? The front. Start at the front. Okay, I think back actually said it first. So, sir, the blue and white, you are number one. Okay. Ma'am, you're number two. Ma'am, you will be number three. Gentleman in the yellow shirt, you'll be number four. You will be number five. In the tank top, number six. Number seven. Number eight. Number nine. Number 10. And number 11. So we have 11 groups. That's good. That's about what I wanted. So if group number one would like to come up and tell us why the tribal council should not vote your tribe off. You can need to have all your members up there. So we can all be on YouTube.
And our group is called How We Met Our Partners. And we base it off of the TV show, How I Met Your Mother, because we are a dynamic group of people who all like to be different in some ways. But we do have our similarities. For example, we are all organized and we are compassionate towards others. Um, we are loyal as well. And so, like the friends in How I Met Your Mother, we like to stick together. And um, we all also like humor. And I think that's a good thing when it comes to marketing because everyone wants to have a laugh all the time now and now and then. And um Lucky seven. What's up, sir? 
I apparently just abandoned my group and then they figured out they had to pay the way. Hey everybody, we're Lauren, Tamisha, Stephen, Christian, and Vanessa. I'm Jared. Um, we called our group Marketing Anonymous because when you're marketing, it's not about the marketer. It's about the person you're marketing. Right now we're marketing ourselves, but as a marketer, you're going to be marketing other people. And so you are not the important part of this equation. They are. And so we don't feel that we should be the ones taking the spotlight. So our main skills are time management, uh, learning new skills, critical thinking, and presenting in written or verbal format. And we understand that typically you want to get everything you can say, but brevity and leaving things out is just as important. We want to be sure that your message is what is heard. Okay.
Hello everyone, I'm Kyle Spiel. I'm Han. Uh, Tyler. Alex. Ryan. Pete. I'm also Alex. <laughs> <laughs> well, when we discussed amongst ourselves, we figured out that these six studs and this veteran, we can do basically anything you need us to do. You want to build a website? We can do that. You want us to <coughs> analyze data? We got that in spades. You want to survive in the woods for a month? We can do that too. We can do anything you or your company or anybody else needs. We are the men of marketing superstars, or you can call us for short, the moms. <laughs> That's very good. What do you guys think? You all did a great job on your presentations for today. That's great. So, I'm going to pass out the syllabi. There's probably nothing worse than being read to. Uh, but I am going to go over this so that if you ever file a great appeal, I've got 79 witnesses that can say, yes, in fact, I did give this document to you. Yes, in fact, I did go over it so that you know what was expected in this class. And yes, in fact, I followed it to the letter of the law since this is our contract with each other as to how we are going to proceed for the semester. So there are a number of copies um, in here that maybe messed up. The copier was putting lines through everything, so if you got one, Come back up and I'll try and replace it if I've got enough. If not, I will also put this up on the D2L website. So it will be up on D2L uh, hopefully by the end of the day. I didn't quite get them all on um, from the other two or three classes that I teach. So it will be there. You can print it and download it um, if you need to get an extra copy. So be sure and look at the D2L website. That is also the website where what I will do is I will break the content into modules, and I will post the videos from each class under the appropriate module that corresponds to the syllabus. So if you look at the content tab of the D2L site, I will place the video URL in that content tab so you can get to the syllabus, and then also all of the lectures that I'll post online for the class. So keep up with D2L, look at it. Everybody should know how to log on to D2L by this point, hopefully, right? Everybody knows how to do that. Good deal. Hopefully I didn't give away my last copy of the syllabus. Thanks. All right. So. This is marketing uh, 3013. That's the CRM in case you need to drop or do anything like that that you'll need. For the registrars, you get three credit hours. My name is Grant Fury. Uh, I will be your professor for this semester. You can call me Grant. You can call me Dr. Geary. You can call me Professor Geary. I would prefer that you not call me Mr. Geary. I have two doctor's degrees. I think I've kind of earned it. But you're welcome to call me Grant. I give you my cell phone number. You're welcome to text me want to uh, communicate. I know that your generation loves texting, so you're free to text. That's why I give you that cell phone number, because a lot of times I have another job on campus. I'm also the Title IX investigator for the university, so a lot of times I'm out on campus. I mean, going to meetings and things like that, and it's just easier than calling my office phone and leaving a message there. So you can text. If you do call that number, please leave a message, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. My office is in Thatcher Hall, which is right across the green over here. It's in the very top floor. There's a large gun outside that building. Please don't be afraid. They told me that the firing pin has been taken out of it, so it will not shoot you. But you'll have to go all the way up to the third floor. If you want to use the elevator, you have to go all the way to the other end of the building, and the elevator's on, on that um, east wing of the building. And my office is in the very far north west corner of the building. So if you go in that back door, straight up those stairs on the second door on the right overlooking Bronco Lake. My email is giagiri at uco.edu and my office hours are at an ungodly time from 7.30 to 9.30 on Tuesdays and Thursdays. I know you don't think that 
the sun shines at 7.30 in the morning, does it? When I was in my 20s, I thought that there was nothing that could be done afternoon that couldn't be better done, or before noon that couldn't better be done afternoon. And so I was an afternoon purpose person, and then all of a sudden you hit 40, and something happens. And you're wide awake at like 5 in the morning. So I'm up at 5 in the morning. So my office hours are from 7.30 to 9.30. If that doesn't work for you, let me know, and I'll be happy to meet you uh, at times outside of that. Also, because of my job it's with the university as a Title IX investigator, um, it's always a good idea if you text me and say, hey, I'm headed to your office because I may be out. A lot of times, because the copier is in this building and we don't have a copier in that building that will do large print jobs, particularly for a class like this, I may be out. So if you'll just text me and say, hey, I'm headed to your office, that'd be great. Um, this course will be recorded and broadcast. I've told you that. If you don't want to be on YouTube, uh, we need to find another class. If you're in the Witness Protection Program, we need to find you another class. So there's the course description. Um, the rationale, basically, marketing is a pervasive discipline. What does that mean, that it's pervasive? Trying to persuade someone to buy something or otherwise okay. something. Make Makes people buy. Okay. It's part of everything. It's everything. It's ev everything that we do, whether you think about it or not, involves marketing. From the goods you buy, that's marketing, transportation, logistics, how they get to you, to the way you find out about them, the information that we use. You all market yourself constantly, every single day, whether you think about it or not. And so this course is enormously important in not only making you a better business person, for those of you that are business majors, but also in terms of making you a better consumer and increasing your awareness of how we influence your buying decision. So it's an important course. There's the message from the dean that he asked you to read. The textbook for this is, I have chosen the 11th edition because there are lots of these out there. You can get whatever edition you want. You just have to make sure that the chapters correspond because they have switched numbers from the 11th to the 12th edition. So I also listed this at the bookstore. I try to get this so that you can find them on Amazon, Biblio, or halfpricebooks.com very cheaply. And you should be able to get this 11th edition very, very cheaply because they've already come out with the 13th edition. So you're welcome to use any of those that you want. Um, most of the page numbers, by reference page numbers and chapter numbers, will be out of this edition of the textbook. So if that's important to you, you want to get the one that looks like this. If it's not important to you, you can get, I don't know, the 10th edition for all I care. It's, it's entirely up to you. Just make sure that you keep up with the chapter topics, not necessarily the chapter numbers if you do that. So the University of Central Oklahoma is committed to transformative learning. What does that mean? I guess it means that I'm supposed to engage in entertainment. So <clears throat> to that uh, end, uh, you should be able to communicate competently by expressing ideas uh, in writing and using the computer. We'll also do group projects from, from time to time to hear these critical thinking challenges. It would be helpful if one member of your group at least every time brings a laptop computer because we will upload that to the D2L site for your groups and that's how I'll submit those grades uh, for you so I can grade them easily and papers don't get lost so you need to be able to do that. And this demonstrates discipline, knowledge, creative and scholarly activity and critical thinking. You should be able to after you complete this class, solve problems by identifying problems, defining them, collecting data. All of these things that you're going to need to do as a consumer are enormously important. And this is discipline, knowledge, creative and scholarly activity, and critical thinking. And finally, this class will help you develop life and educational and career goals. How many of you are accounting majors? OK, you'll get to intermediate, you'll cry, and you'll come see me. Right? So uh, maybe we'll change your career goals. Hopefully you'll become a marketer after you take this class. If not, you still say uh, in accounting, it will be helpful in understanding uh, the core function of business that marketing provides. And so you'll develop life and education goals and be able to explain the impact that both business has on the environment and the individual, and also the individual on business and the environment. And so that's civic engagement, global and cultural competencies, leadership, and of course, ethics. Here is the course outline that will follow. Um, it's subject to modification. If something happens, we might want to change chapters around. If you find something that's really, really interesting, you send me an email. 
we might uh, change things. For example, usually in the springtime, I change the chapter on integrated marketing, communication, and advertising to be at the beginning of the semester. Why would I do that? Integrated marketing, communication, and advertising, what happens at sort of the beginning of the semester in the spring? Super Bowl. What? Super Bowl. Super Bowl, yeah. So I can change the, the thing around if, if we need to. But basically, that's the topics that we'll cover and sort of the outline that we'll go through. Um, evaluation, this is enormously important, how your exams and things will be uh, calculated. There are five exams in here. There are four regular exams and a comprehensive final. Because of the size of this class, and to allow you to study if you want to take the final, we allow you in this class, in this section, to take the exam with you after you leave so that you will have a study guide for the final. That means that if you miss the exam, I can't give you a makeup because the exam has been compromised because people have done what? Taking it home with them. So if you miss an exam, you just bought yourself the final. Because what I will do is I will drop one exam score. If, on the other hand, you take all four of the exams and you are happy with your exam score, you do not have to then take the what? The final exam. And you can use that time to maximize your utility and study for another class that you might want. There will also be an article review that will be an individual assignment that you will do that will be worth 10% of your grade. There will be a group project that will be uh, worth 15% of your grade. And then we'll have weekly, grouply, weekly group critical thinking challenges that will make up another 15% for 100% of the grade. So I use a straight 90, 80, 70, 60. Some of my colleagues have, in an attempt to start curing grade inflation, have started saying that a 93 to 100 is an A, and a 92 to an 83 is an A. That's a stupid grading system, so we'll just stick with the old fashioned, you know, old school days, 90, 80, 70, 60. Attendance, this is very important. This course requires a great deal of interaction with me and you because we're going to engage in transformative learning. And so you need to attend class. You have three free absences, and after that, I will start deducting points for each additional absence after that. Now, having said that, I do realize that life sometimes happens, and students experience things that are beyond their control. Things like, I don't know, you got the car wreck on the way here. I will excuse that absence. Students do this a lot too. They, it's the fall semester. What starts happening in say, late October, early November of the fall semester? Ice. Huh? Ice. Ice. Weather. Weather. What else? Homecoming. Homecoming. I, I'm not going to excuse homecoming. <laughs> what else happens? People start to get the flu. Okay. If you get the flu because you didn't get the flu shot, which a lot of you won't because you think that it makes you sick, which it doesn't, um, don't come. I'll excuse the absence. And for God's sake, don't do this. I have students every semester, and I say this every semester. And they don't listen to my voice. They will, they will do this. They will. <coughs> Dr. Aguirre, I didn't want to come to class because I'm sick. Oh, so you came to my office, <laughs> which is a small space. So that I, I realize that you think that I'm like Venus, born of the foam and immune to your germs. No, just send me an email. I will excuse the absence. I will use what's called a rational basis test to determine whether or not I should excuse the absence. What's a rational basis test? Well, you have a means, and you have an end, and there should be some connection here, which we call in logic a nexus between the means and the end. I am sick. Don't come. Don't infect everybody else. I had a car wreck. That's a legitimate excuse. I will excuse it. Just send me an email. I would suggest that you not wait until finals week to tell me, oh, I had 15 absences, and these are the reasons why, because I become a little suspicious. Um, you know, when I get these at the end of the, the, at the, end of the term, but 
Um, if you'll email me, I, I'm generally pretty flexible on that. But you should come. I can't give you credit for those days that you don't come for the critical thinking challenges. So, you know, it, that's part of the participation grade. And I just, if you're not there, can't, can't uh, give you credit for that. Um, there is no makeup for exams one through four. That's big and bold because we let you take it out of there. So it's not my policy because we allow you to take it out of this class. That's the department's policy, not mine. So you'll have to take that up with somebody else. Um, the ADA statement, when I used to be the school's attorney, that was my first job here on campus with the Associate General Counsel. I wrote that statement. It's a brilliant uh, uh, paragraph of prose there that you should read that, that I crafted in my finest legalese. Um, the article review, we'll talk about this and what you should do, but here's a detail. And throughout the semester, students will say, there's just not much there on the article review. Really? Like, there's a rubric. So if you want to know how I'm going to grade it, I'll be, I'll, yeah, like there's a rubric here that will tell you exactly the components and how it will be graded for your article review. Basically what you're going to do, and we'll talk about this more, there's one class session I devote to logic and critical thinking and how to write this article review, is you should find an article in marketing. And everything is marketing. I just told you that, right? Does it say what? Pervasive discipline. This will come tripping off your tongue by the end of the semester. Two things. Marketing is a pervasive discipline. You cannot escape it. Right? You can't, unless you go to a deserted island somewhere, you're going to engage in marketing. Pervasive, insta, pervasive discipline. It is also, and this should come tripping off your tongue by the end of the semester, the only fully integrated function of the firm. Marketing is the only fully integrated function of the firm. Can you run a firm and not know anything about double entry bookkeeping and accounting? Absolutely. Right? What is double entry bookkeeping and accounting? Debits on the left side. And credits on the right side. Right side. Unless, of course, what? You're in banking, in which case it's what's on the left? <laughs> Credits and what's on the right. Yeah, I don't know why bankers insist on flipping it, but they do. Right? You could you could run a business. I could hang my law license outside my car and take cash and not have to do any kind of accounting. You still have to do marketing. Still going to have to find customers and communicate with them. Right? So marketing is the only fully integrated function of the firm. There's also a group project, which uh, is also got. A what? Rubric that goes along with it. So you'll know exactly how that's graded. It also provides the due dates. Students say, what are these do? There's actually two due dates listed for each one. It's listed under the review assignment and under the rubric and under the group project. It's also in the schedule on starting on page two of the course outline. So you'll know when due dates are and when tests are and things like that. Are there any questions? All right, well, I'm letting you go three minutes early. But if you feel cheated, you let me know and we'll stay three minutes late on Thursday. How's that? I want you to get your full money's worth.